All right, so in this one, I just wanted to do a first impressions of GPT-4. So if you have the premium subscription, you'll be able to access it from the GUI. Right now, there is a wait list for the API. So I am on that wait list. If you're interested in seeing videos on how to integrate OpenAI services with Node.js, there's a number of videos in my channel and I'll be making more content with ChatGPT4 or GPT-4 in the API uh, specifically. So look for those if you're interested. But in this one, I just wanted to demonstrate it a little bit and show the things that I've noticed. So in the interface, you'll see that there is the dropdown similar to what you get in the premium subscription where you had access to the legacy model as well as the default model. I think most of us have been using the default model where it is that turbo version where everything is just a lot faster. And that sort of dovetails into my first impression of GPT-4. And I think in part why they might have put these little bar charts on the left hand side here showing things like reasoning, speed and conciseness, because as soon as you put in a message into the prompt bar here for GPT-4, you will notice it's considerably slower uh, after using the default model, that turbo model for, for some time. So I feel like that might be part of the reasoning is you're used to having that turbo version and really having those prompts come back to you pretty quickly. If you're using something like GitHub Copilot, that it might even feel even slower to use something like this. But I think the thing with GPT-4 uh, to consider is that it does handle reasoning and conciseness considerably better. So I'm still thinking of ideas on how to demonstrate this. By all means, put a prompt that you're curious in seeing. Um, I'll aggregate a few of these in uh, an upcoming video and demonstrate how it compares to the legacy and, and default model here. Um, and the first thing that I just wanted to try was, okay, when I saw it could handle the context of a lot more content is what will happen if I ask for a description of the React production minified library. Now this looks like just like a jumble of code to me as minified code does look like. And I just wanted to demonstrate what it looks like between the turbo model and then GPT-4. So if I say, what is this code doing? And I paste it in here, it accepts all that code, which is great. And if I do it over here as well, what is this code doing? Okay, so we have to wait for the other message to finish. And the main thing I just want to see is, okay, how well does it describe it? So it's, it's reasoning is apparently better. It's conciseness is better. So once this finishes, I'll put a prompt here on uh, the turbo model and we'll see what the difference is. is. Is it that much better to wait for the time or are a lot of people still gonna be leveraging uh, the GPT 3.5 uh, turbo model until GPT 4 speeds up a bit? Let me know your thoughts, leave a comment below. I'm, I'm really just uh, curious and exploring this um, like everyone else right now. So let's ask, ask the same question of what is this code doing? Okay, so we have a brief explanation and how about I say explain the code? So as you can see here, so the first impression is, so it's trying to explain the code, but it's, it's explaining in the context of those minified variables. Whereas with GPT-4, it was able to take that code and the minified variables and sort of abstract that out to how you would actually use that as a user. So right off the bat, it's that's a pretty interesting use case for, just exploring this. Now, obviously there's a lot of different contexts of how you can explore this. I'm really curious how, how uh, others will be, be using this. And yeah, if you have any ideas, it doesn't have to be coding related, but if it is, that is even better. Uh, give me an idea of, of what you wanna see uh, in, in comparison with uh, GPT-4 and GPT-3, uh, 3.5 and whatnot. And until the next one.